Okay, so we're talking about um, minor major, a relative minor to its relative major, and how you can uh, transpose a melody to a minor key very easily when you use the juxtaposition of those two chords. The reason being that, like if we're in the key of C, and we're talking about its relative minor, which is six steps. Mm -hmm. Count up the alphabet. A. A. Right, A minor, right? So, uh, if I were to compare the C chord to the A minor chord, I have C, E, and G are the elements of the C chord. Okay. C, E, G. Okay. And an A minor chord has a C, E, A. So two notes in common make these chords very, very similar, and that's why they're called relative. Okay. These are commonly used in songwriting, yes? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I mean... In fact, you know, it's, a, it's an old standard thing to go like, you know, you have a right. song in like C major, and then you want your bridge. Right. And then take it to the sixth minor. Okay, yeah. I'm glad you... I'm so dumb. I'm glad you explained this stuff easily, but uh, yeah. Okay, so... Good, good, good. Yeah. Glad you get it. Um... So I was going to demonstrate how you can take a melody. One of the fun, really fun jobs is like uh, is changing the harmonic background of a piece of music, but keeping the melody exactly the same. All right. Okay. Uh, jazz guys love to do this, and they've done remarkable. I can't think of any instances offhand, but. Uh, you know, just taking a pop song and tweaking the chord changes around. Uh, I got a gig. Um, I forget the name of the movie. Something like uh, it was about the voting fraud, a documentary movie about the voting fraud. And uh, these people in the Palisades produced this movie. You mean the hanging chads, that sort of stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and the actual, actually, this was a whistleblowing movie. The guy that um, was paid to write code that could be tweaked. He blew the whistle, and they interviewed this dude. Anyway, I was hired to to do um, some music for him, you know. And uh, one of the uh, suggestions was that I do a version of um, the Star Spangled Banner, a la Hendrix, like do oh do the Hendrix thing. Okay. And I thought, well, why would they hire me to do the Hendrix when they could just get the Hendrix? Thing? Yeah. And I thought, no, I want to I want to do the Star Spangled Banner, but I want to do it different. You know, um, uh, was it yet? Yeah, I think it was. Anyways, um, so uh, I, I, typical me, typical musician. You know, I never sat down and worked anything out. I'm, I'm, I'm trundling over to the Palisades, thinking, what am I going to do with this? You know, <laughs> and I thought, oh, I'll take it to the relative minor and put it in a sad minor key because, after all, you know, this, this is a new. Cent uh, new century, new decade, and we need a different feeling, a, um, a different kind of sardonic twist on okay. the Star Spangled Banner. And I thought, well, let's make it really sad because it looks like we're lo losing, you know, integrity in government and stuff like that. So let's make it a sad one. So uh, um, what I did instead of da 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 da, -da I did like. Uh, I forget, I created a loop. And I did like a real serious minor chord. Something like that. And and superimpose the star swing on that. You know, that sort of thing. I don't remember how I threw it together. Now, that wasn't chord substitution. That was playing it in a, in a different... In a different mode? Well, it was off the sixth chord, you know, the relative minor. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I could explain this. Um, there are two things you can do with this. One is, like, say the C going to the F is one to four. Okay. So you want to take that to A minor. I'm not really giving you good examples, unfortunately, but if you took that to A minor, there's a one to four relationship from that A minor, which would be A minor to D minor. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's the same distance between C to F is the same distance between A minor right. and D so minor. Right. So that becomes sort of the fourth so chord. So you follow in parallel. You could follow in parallel. Okay. You know, okay. Um, that sort of thing. Um, okay. No, that, that sort of, that makes sense. Okay. So I, I wish I could think of... Like, I 
was feeling Closer to an idea that might work, and because you're in minor, so you, then you can really get a little crazy if you want to. Instead of E minor, which is the pure mode, you could do the E7, which gives us harmonic minor feeling. So, okay. And now it sounds almost Latin. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> and, then, and then you could do your Latin version of, of uh, sure. You know. Well, now you can also. Is there another sort of construction mode where you go from uh, the relative minor in the same song into the the major? Into the major. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's the reverse trick. Same thing. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, there's probably a, a thousand Beatles songs that do okay. this. Okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. You can have your verse. about this one, it goes to relative major, now here's a, this is a really cool thing about this particular song, not only does he take the minor, A minor, to a relative major, but he takes it also to A major, the I'm just the lucky kind. You know that? He takes an A major, which is the parallel minor. You keep the same root, A minor, A major. Okay. All right. Now we're in a completely, this is a three sharp key. We're just in a no sharp key. So we're, we're really straight far in this modulation. When you do parallel, you're, you know, a good distance away from your initial key. Okay. Somewhere along the line, that was good. That was a great little lesson there. Um, somewhere along the line, I want you to maybe think of. You know, it's sort of like that. What that Hawaiian guy did with uh, "Somewhere Over the Rainbow," the ukulele guy right, right, that right, was right. in the ads all the yeah, time. Yeah. He kept the same changes what? mostly. Well, he did. He didn't. He, did he do any chord substitutions? No. He just gave it a different rhythm. Oh, is that all? I'm pretty okay. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but maybe for next time, if you could think of a couple, and keep in mind, keep this as simple as you know, my little puddle of mud. Uh, of songs that we could do, you could slowly take me through doing chord substitution and what what things that can present. In other words, it'd be a song that obviously could be, you know, fairly easily sung in in a somewhat of a different way. Or uh, same, keeping the integrity of the song, but having different chording, different voicing. I, what do you is that you call voicing? I don't know. Yeah, sure. Uh, voice leading, yeah, I, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, that's a fun game to play if you know your theory. It's a really fun game to play. You could, um... Well, now, do you do that in your jazz stuff? Is this more of a... Do jazz players do an awful lot of chord substitution? They do it like crazy. Like all the time? <laughs> yeah, they love to do that. They yeah. They love to do that. Um, I mean, that's part of the art of jazz. I mean, that's why in the real book they give you only four note chords. And, and uh, unless it's really, really required by the song, they won't even tell you, they won't give you an altered dominant. They'll leave it up to you to alter the dominant, you know. Okay. Now that's keeping, do you understand, remember the old Christmas tree analogy with the tinsel and all right. that? You still have the same chord underneath. They're two approaches. I mean, one is actually truly substituting out a chord for a chord that has a different function altogether. Oh, okay. Like, uh, let's so this is, this is something in, out of the outfield, that sort of thing? Yeah. It's, like it's a, not even in the ballpark. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, I could do, in other words, like, I could do a C major 9 and maybe a all right, a, a, a G a, uh, 13 flat 9, right? And I could sing Mary had a little lamb Little lamb No, that'll work but Yeah, little lamb, little yeah. Lamb, Mary had a uh, You know, whatever a Little lamb, her fleece, her fleece was white as snow Now those are the real chord Mary had a little lamb, little lamb right. So now I'm just like really making it a fat C 
and, and it altered 13, but that's still G7 and C. Right. But I could go like this. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. And now I'm completely substituting out chords. Okay. All right. And jazzers love to do that, too. Probably there was a version, a jazz version of Blackbird done. You probably heard it before by the Beatles, and I'm, I'm sure they must have substituted out a few chords there. Okay. That one. What uh, uh, when you're? What do you call the technique where you're you're doing melody and full chording at the same time? Go oh, chord me chord melody. Chord melody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know we've talked a little bit about this. Is that something that guitars along the path that you took they would learn to do? Can all guitars with those skills do they do learn that? I know a lot of pretty advanced guitarists that, that can't do that even in a folk setting. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, like say, uh, the song I played before. Uh, right? Uh, I, could, I used to do that solo without a looper when I first, first started doing solo guitar shows. Or, um, say, uh, Green Day song, uh, Time of Your Life. Not many guitar players actually have. Have the ear for that? There's not a lot of guys that do that. Oh, I mean, the, the the more bluegrass guys would be well capable of that because they do a lot of melody with. Oh really? Playing. But you know, I know some guys that are really advanced even in jazz, and they don't they don't uh, offhand well, do that sort of thing. I've heard you do that sort of thing, haven't I, with some jazz standards? Well, yeah, that's chord melody. Now, you could get the same jazz guy that'll be able to play a chord melody uh, piece of music, but won't be able to use these folk chords and do the same thing. It's, oh. it's kind of funny because, you know, I always say, like, the true, the mark of a true, truly good musician is flexibility, the ability to flow through different styles. And guitar just offers so much, you know. Well, I so, do, yeah. don't you play Misty? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is kind of... Now, did you... Did, what, do you remember when you learned how to do that? When I learned how to... When you learned how to, say, play that number. Well, it's a how long old time ago. It's a long, I, I think I found it by accident. I took these two chords. I was experimenting with diminished sevenths, which go up in minor thirds like that, in the same four notes. And then I... That's a, a jazz sound right there, 13 flat. And then a, a jazz piano player told me about the sour little resolution on this song. Oh. But even so, um, now speaking of a piano player, can, when you're playing, can you see kind of what's going on on the on the keyboard? Oh yeah. And adjust and whatever, and I mean, you pick up what's happening here. Uh, I'll give an example. Like with my band, we wanted to get a keyboardist in there, and we're doing the song. Uh, no, 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 we weren't. We were doing all blues, uh, what we call all blue kind, uh, our tweak of Miles' all blues, a G13 chord, right? And we're doing the song, and this is like, you know, the guy's playing with us for the first time, and I tell you, man, he was name-dropping all these bebop players, uh. you know, and guys I didn't even know much about, you know, because I'm not a jazz purist, I don't study jazz. So I was like kind of intimidated, like, oh, this is an advanced jazz guy. Typical LA musicians. Typical. <laughs> Typical. He sits down and we start playing the song. And it's like, this is easy. This is a blues. This is not hard. Uh -huh. All blues is an easy piece of music. And um, we're playing along and I'm like hearing something not quite right in the keys. So I, I stopped the band. I said, excuse me, but can I hear the inversion you're using for the, for the G13 chord? And he plays the inversion, and I'm looking reverse to him. Uh -huh. And I saw the inversion, I said, what is a C doing in that chord? That's a suspension. And, and, and it's, it's arguing with the rest of the, the way we're voicing it. Uh -huh. Just play a straight... What was it, uh, can you play what he was playing? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I don't know the chord. I, I don't know what he was playing exactly, but a C against a G13 is pretty hard. Okay. I okay. mean, for, you know... I, when I say hard, I, I say that loosely because... There's a place it can be okay. Right, exactly. You could use anything for effect. Yeah. So, you know, it's just my particular taste. There's the minor ninth I talk about that's like, 
You know, in classical music, they said the devil's interval was the uh, tritone. I say the minor ninth is the devil's <laughs> interval. It's just horrifying to me. <laughs> ah. Okay. I, I prefer this much over. Uh, yeah. You know. Sure. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I saw over his piano, and it was a very embarrassing moment because I said, "No, let's do straight 13." And he's like fumbling; he couldn't do this chord. And I said, "Dude, you know, just throw uh, what, what's the voicing F, B, and E, and play a G in the bass. Just do F, B, and E." And he's fumbling, looking for an F, B, and E. And I'm like, "What the hell? This guy's like <laughs> name dropping jazz guys, coming off like he's..." You know, oh, like a God. seasoned musician, he can't form a 13th chord. So that was the last time we saw that guy. It was very embarrassing because we all looked at each other when he was sitting there trying to form a 13th chord. We we're all like, what? <laughs> you know, even as guitar players, I knew that. Well, I was just gonna, I was just gonna ask you: that, Is this a surprise sometimes to keyboard players that guitarists know what they're talking about? I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, you know the old joke. You're a lower. Lower subculture. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Guitarists are well. That's because they're down a dozen. What's the know? old joke? Oh, they had to get a guitar player turned down, hand them a chart. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. And it's true. It's true. I mean, I can't. I can't sight read. I'm a crappy sight reader. I can read chord charts. I can't so, read melodies. But you can take one of those lead books or whatever. Yeah, I can flow through all that stuff. Not a problem. Yeah. And that's you know, I've played sessions doing that sort of thing. But what you said earlier, there's the, if you're lucky, there's maybe four chords or whatever in there, or what? On, on, you know, the, the bare skeleton, there may just be how skimpy the accord, the, 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 what is the pop, what is the name for the fake book, fake book? Oh, 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 uh, the, the real book. Yeah, the is that, okay. The real book, the jazz book. Okay, yeah, what, whatever. You were talking about how that, that's on the page, how that looks on the page. Right, right, right. Well, the difference between pop and jazz is that pop, you'll play what they write on the page, and in jazz, you have the artistic freedom to extend out a chord, okay. even substitutes. Some guys will do a literal substitution, but, you know, you have to talk to the other musicians, especially if you've got a keyboard player. These guys are harmony crazy, so you get, you know, if you're also yeah. a harmonist, you've got to say, okay, you know, I'm hearing a different inversion. What are you doing over there? You know, yeah. like, You've talked before about lots of times you listen to, listen to their turnaround. Oh, yeah, times. listen to their turnaround, you know. Yeah, it'll give I mean, you a it's clue. Just, it's just like, in a way, it's almost understood that you follow the piano player because he's the guy that knows the most or thinks he knows <laughs> the most. You know. I'll never forget a time down in Austin, I was playing, uh, I was in the band, we were doing Hair, and I was in the band, and we had a musical director that had a master's, or even he was going for a doctorate or something like that, music, keyboard player. The drummer had a master's in percussion. Right, so they're just snobbing me out because why? I'm a guitar player. I don't know <laughs> shit, right? So, uh, guy says to me, he goes, um, he goes, I, I, and it was the 13th chord actually we were talking about. He goes, uh, you know, he goes, I think I need the 13th chord in a higher octave, and could you put the ninth on top? And I knew he was testing me, and I just went, okay. <laughs> you want it there? Is that what you want? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, he shut up after that. In terms of testing me, you know, I was yeah. like, okay, dude, I know it too, okay? <laughs> you know, as long as these guys don't throw a figured bass at me, I'm okay. And probably if I throw a figured bass at them, they wouldn't be okay. Nobody, it's like remembering, you know, like trigonometry. Like, who cares? You know?